Greetings everyone, my name is Karen Devino. I am the superintendent of schools here in Vernon, New Jersey. I am so excited to be here today at Glen Meadow Middle School. We're gonna hear from two super important people in our district. They've worked very, very hard this summer along with everybody else in getting us ready to go back to school in September under very unique circumstances. In our careers and our lifetimes, we will likely never see this again, thankfully. Um, but we are gonna kick this off today and I'd like to introduce Mrs. Rosemary Gephardt, our principal, and Dr. Eric Kosak, our vice principal here at Glen Meadow, to talk to you about how we're going to reopen Glen Meadow Middle School. Rosemary? Hi everyone, um, we are really looking forward to seeing our students, I know you're hearing that across the district, we have not seen our students really, um, other than virtually for almost six months, and it's time. Uh, we're really happy to have them back in, we've done a lot of preparation, we have had a lot of people, um, anyone that really works in the district, uh, working very, very dif uh, diligently, our faculty, a lot of summer work, uh, a lot of work that's been done with our administrative staff here, our administrative assistants, our custodial staff, our maintenance staff have been working really since last March to uh, really ready the building. And we are very excited to have our students coming in and opening uh, for a new school year. So we, uh, we cannot say thank you enough to everyone that has worked uh, very, very hard to get ready for this year. So Mrs. Gephardt, why don't you share just a little bit about some of the summer professional development curriculum writing. Obviously, like you said in the spring, we left rather abruptly, right? Actually, the Vernon School District closed before the state closed. We closed when people were getting anxious, when we were getting anxious. The last day for our children was March 13th, which is crazy. Um, and we shifted to online learning without any kind of training. So can you talk a little bit about some of the things that have been happening over the summer with curriculum writing and the focus on instruction virtually? Absolutely. Um, if you um, have not already seen uh, Mr. Gagliostro and um, Mr. Rogers' podcast, you want to take a look at that because they really spelled out all of the hundreds and hundreds of hours that teachers are spending working on analyzing the curriculum to see where there might have been some gaps and things that we have to fill into the next grade level, um, understanding how to use all of our tools, creating blended learning environments, while teachers, in addition to, are working on their own to prepare lessons to get ready and um, taking the tools that we already have, um, all those online tools and really using them to a deeper extent and more thorough extent. Um, I know a lot of the teachers here are working very collaboratively, playing that first unit of instruction. Some of the teachers are making the screencastifies, while some of the teachers are making the ed puzzles or the cahoots or the pair decks that accompany it. So we're trying to make um, our teaching and learning really 21st century like it's never been done before. We've always used the tools. We're very, very lucky. We have a, a myriad of tools. Mr. Shea shared with us a very, very extensive list of so many tools that we have here mm -hmm. that now we're going to go deeper in them. So whether the child is in school or at home learning, the, the learning is applicable to the, the learner today. And it can be done either in person or can be done really at home very seamlessly. So um, really our children in this building will really truly be only carrying a Chromebook. You won't see any books. You really will see maybe some folders and things like that. And this is all really in preparation for really um, teaching with best practice, honestly, as well as preparing for students who are home all the time, as well as those students that are those virtual learners and uh, will be coming in and out in the hybrid uh, methodology. You know, and that's such a great segue, uh, Mrs. Gephardt. Yesterday, we put out information to our community that uh, our teachers will have two extra days of professional development at the beginning of the year. So it's teachers only, September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Our children do not return to school until the Tuesday after Labor Day, which is September 8th. That was a recent change, folks, so it's really important that you know that. And that is exactly for what Mrs. Gephardt just talked about, making sure that our teachers are confident, that they're successful in using all these virtual tools. We want our children to have a very rich learning environment and a great experience, whether they've chosen the exclusively hybrid schedule, the exclusively virtual schedule, excuse me, or the hybrid schedule. So speaking of that, I want to talk a little bit about health and safety precautions. And before I ask Dr. Kosak to uh, elaborate on that, I have um, a map that I wanted to share. I know uh, Mr. Shea is probably gonna link this up on the podcast. He does such a great job for us. 
Um, this map indicates, this was released yesterday by the Department of Health, and it indicates that Sussex County at the top of New Jersey is in the green. The green is great news for us. That means that we are at the lowest risk in the state right now. In fact, Sussex County is second only to Salem County, which is all the way at the bottom of New Jersey. But this doesn't mean we take our, our foot off the gas pedal, folks. This means that wearing masks, using hand sanitizer, frequent hand washing and social distancing, they work. They're keeping our numbers low. We have a very cautious community. And I think if we continue to do that, we can remain safe and have our children come into school. And remember, when kids come back, it's half our student population minus the children that are exclusively virtual. So for those of you that have been in Glen Meadow before and said, oh my gosh, it's crowded, there are so many kids, it's not gonna feel that way this year because we've got a third of our students on virtual and then another half in the building at a time, right? So we've got much less uh, student population, it won't, it won't feel crowded and we'll have the social distancing that's required for us to open. But speaking of health and safety, I wanted to ask Dr. Kosek to talk about these things because I think it helps our families feel more comfortable about sending their children back. So Eric? Certainly, thank you, Ms. Tavino. Um, <clears throat> health and safety is our number one priority, uh, not only in Glen Meadow, but also Vernon, Vernon Township School Districts. Um, the mass all the time, on the bus, in the classroom, um, everywhere. In the it, hallways, In the right? hallways, yeah. everywhere that there is students and adults and faculty, there will be masks. They, students, per teacher's discretion, if it's safe and they're outside and there's properly distance, they will receive a mask break, but the social distancing will be practiced to the point where the hallways will be designated as one way, the staircases, up, down, clearly delineated and marked. There will be markers on the floor as well to do social distancing. There will be procedures in place for if a child does get sick through the nurse, as far as what space, spaces have been designed and designated for safety in mind. And there's a plan for the pickup with the nurse and such. The custodians, have done an excellent job as far as arming everybody with sanitizer, disinfectant. The teachers will be able to do that if they so desire. We will also have a member from the pandemic response team to make sure that everything is disinfected the way it should be. There's hand sanitizer stations. You can see one right over there. The student will use it before entry. Also, upon leaving, to make sure everybody is safe and signage will be throughout the entire building to limit the flow. To Ms. Devino's point, uh, roughly one third are um, remote. Right. It really brings it down to around low 200s, 220 per day. When they arrive in the building in the morning, Ms. Devino, we will have designated temperature checkers, mm -hmm. which is above and beyond what the state of New Jersey requires Absolutely. to ensure the safety of all those who enter. And it really boils it down to a nice manageable chunk yes. for the continued safety of our students, faculty, and everyone involved at Glen Meadow. So the great thing about that too, we just want to reiterate, is that for the folks at home, the temperature checking is something that Dr. Kosek had said, as far as I know, we are the only school district in Sussex County, and we're one of the largest in Sussex County. So for us to take this on is quite monumental. It's really to protect children and our faculty so that when children are coming off the bus, we take a temperature before they enter the school building to make sure they're safe. Obviously, if there are any symptoms, you indicated our nurses have isolation rooms, quarantine areas. Everything is being done under uh, the Department of Health guidelines, yes. and everything is being done to protect the privacy of our children. Um, but remember, if your child is sick, keep them home, right? That's really, yes. really important. As always. Yes, as always, right? And, and we'll start to talk a little bit more about that in, in the coming weeks on um, you know, the screenings that parents will do at home, maybe just to feel a little bit more comfortable before they're sending their children in. I really appreciate you outlining as people come off the bus, Dr. Kosek, because yep. I don't want parents to think there'll be log jams. We do have enough staff to cover different areas and entrances. You mentioned the pandemic response assistance. I think it's great. These are the folks that are going to be wiping down all of those high touch surfaces. So Mr. Shea has this in kind of a, a, a tight shot right now, but when you look at Glen Meadow, 
there are you know door handles and there are doorways and there are you know doorknobs and those are the things that we touch frequently that we never ever think about right but now we've got folks that will be here throughout the day while the students are here cleaning and even getting into the classrooms in between classes as much as possible so for me uh, and folks you know that my children go to school here too so it makes me feel better as a parent knowing that we've got a very high level of cleaning and i'm so glad that you outlined those procedures i know that mrs gephardt really wants to mm -hmm. talk about um, orientation mm -hmm. and back to school night yep. so why don't you talk to us Absolutely. about that Absolutely. Um, so we were very fortunate last year to um, have a program where we had the lansbury hollow fifth graders here for lots of different programs to experience what Glen Meadow would be like and what they can kind of looking forward to making that jump from elementary school to middle school. So we're, we're very fortunate we had that connection with them. The last piece of course that we missed was our very big orientation. We had a whole day planned. So what I did um, with our faculty here and Dr. Kosak is we prepared information that was sent home, a very thorough packet as an orientation if you will. And I have a, a group of um, upperclassmen, my eighth graders, that made um, a series of episodes for the sixth graders uh, in an orientation. So we have been pushing those out, if you haven't noticed in your school messenger alerts that have been coming out, we're up to episode nine. And we're going through different vignettes and skits throughout the building of things that students will experience day to day, a day in a life as a, as a, a middle school student here at Glen Meadow. We've been having a lot of fun using another brand new tool that we just got called We Video, where every student in the building and every teacher will actually have this uh, We Video account, which you can do so many wonderful things with. So the students have um, really taken over this program. They have written, produced, uh, directed, uh, filmed and done everything with this orientation. So I hope you enjoy it. And take a look at VTSD Studios. That's where they all live, plus all the other videos coming out from our district. Um, we're putting out several more next week. And it will end with an FAQ that I think the students will really like seeing. And even parents on procedural things in the building, the day-to-day -day kinds of things. And it's really, it's so nice because it's really student to student. Um, I only did like an introductory. Dr. Kosak did a little high. But it really is, um, it really is student created. So uh, I think it, it's something really fun to look at. Uh, so take a look at that. Um, I sent a letter home yesterday in your school messenger email account is get again. Um, and it, it does outline a lot of procedural things, talks about back to school night. It will be virtual, of course, across the district, not just Glen Meadow. And that is now changed to Friday, September 4th. And um, that, that presentation is going to live in Schoology, so it'll be a nice uh, reference kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering about a, a class, you know, how does that English class operate, what's going on in gym, and so on and so forth, that'll always be there for either the student or the parent. Um, we're hoping that the families kind of experience in, uh, that together, because we would have had our back to school night for parents and for students. It's important to bring the families in with their children so everyone can experience the building. Again, making that jump to middle school is probably one of the bigger jumps you're gonna be making. Um, and then that next step being the high school. So we want families to sit together to take a look at each period, period by period, what is expected? What do I need? What kind of materials do I need? What, what can I be looking for in this class? And what's nice is it'll, it'll always live there. Just like any document in, um, in Schoology. So that is coming up um, for Friday, September 4th. And I know that you've worked so hard. Last year, uh, both of you worked really hard to create the Glen Meadow Way. Uh, and it became kind of the cultural expectation of the students here at Glen Meadow. This year, you're introducing the five Ps, right? So Dr. Kosak is holding that up. Yes, our five Ps. Um, we are trying to, and, and, and Dr. Kosak loves to use the term operationalize. We're trying to really operationalize our, our Glen Meadow Way. What does that really look like? Some of those things are very broad based. So we have a huge committee of over 20 teachers uh, working on the Glen Meadow Way Days Committee. We, we were uh, planning and, and have curriculum written for the first two days. We, I know we ref referenced that as a soft opening. Mm -hmm. We're modifying that, of course, for the first four days. And it will focus on those five Ps and how if you do these five Ps, we're all working together. We're yeah. all hearing the same message. Yeah, and what that, what that speaks to, uh, the prompt, prepared, positive, pr 
productive is it really concentrates on the soft skills and the social emotional well-being and that education as well not only the academics because those skills truly transcend not only academics but the social emotional learning piece mm -hmm. which we all know is very very important especially at the middle school level yeah, and that's really essential. I'm so glad you're focusing on that. Remember that one of the things that many people are worried about is with the social, social isolation, how will children respond, right? So we do actually have trauma-informed te uh, teams throughout the district to help children that are dealing with adjustment uh, challenges as we go through being home for six months, coming back on a virtual schedule, having fear about COVID. There's a lot happening for our, our young people. And middle school tends to be all about me, right? It's a very personal age. Mm -hmm. So we really have a lot of really great tools in place. I commend the both of you for putting this together. I think it's gonna be fabulous. Uh, Rosemary, did you wanna talk about the schedule? What yes, does that yes. look like? So we have three different types of schedules. They are posted on the Glen Meadow website. We have, of course, a regular schedule, a delayed opening schedule, and an early dismissal schedule. We are obviously working on a delay or an early dismissal schedule across the whole district. So we're taking the day, the nine periods, and we, we are compressing them. So please be mindful of that because every school might be doing it a little differently. The high school might be different than Rolling Hills, than Lounsbury, and so on. We are doing all of our periods periods one through nine in a, uh, a compressed day. So if you want to look at the times, just if you're interested, um, they, they are living on the website as well. So we have a nine period day. You're going to see every subject every day, um, obviously for a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that we've given you so much information here, but it's really important. This is not a traditional opening, right? We've never been through this before. Dr. Kosek, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about technology. Why don't you share some of the folks uh, with that information? Certainly, Mr. Vino. Um, first and foremost, none of this would be possible without the excellent, dedicated staff at Glen Meadow. Whether it be the faculty, the reopening committee, the intervention curriculum, everybody I've never seen work as hard mm. ever than I have since the closing, unfortunately, of March 13th. We were set in a situation that essentially was abrupt and it happened like that. Since then, um, the technology committee, Mr. Shea, Janet Tisenzo, everyone in there really has gone above and beyond to strengthen the virtual pedagogy. Whether it's hybrid learning, the blended learning they have so many tools that are now going to be implemented for the instructional in school out of school virtual in person whether it's we video cami screencastify there are so many tools in the toolbox and mr shea and his team and the staff here really i can't say enough good things about it next week Tech Week, we all know that, the 24th, the 25th, the 26th. I signed up myself for two or three workshops a day. Good. It is a plethora of activities that we did not have the ability to dig that deep when the governor pulled the right, plug right, right. on March 13th. Yep, absolutely. Since then, mm -hmm. we have done our homework, studied the exam, and we will be more prepared than ever to deliver an instructional product that I would say rivals the best schools, not only in the county, in New Jersey, as far as the amount of work these great people yeah. have done. Yeah, thank you, and it's a great point. I mean, the reality is we had to reimagine education in a very short amount of time. Our people have done so, we can't thank them enough. I'm so glad that you gave them a shout out. And, you know, speaking of technology, um, the place to go, Mrs. Gephardt, where do we stay up to date? Always, 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 please, I always tell parents, please almost bookmark my blog. I do try to update it at least every two weeks. There are many, many links there. A lot of the things I'm pointing to uh, are, are going to be linked there. So it's like, well, where's that supply list? It's going to be on my blog. Go back to previous blogs. I'm spotlighting teaching and learning frequently, but I'm also giving you um, in informational kinds of, of um, pieces of, of uh, things that are important to every parent and every student in, in the building. Right, and important so, announcements are there, announcements almost are there. everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I constantly try to put anything that you would need as a parent or a student, yes. spotlighting things or giving informational uh, pieces of, of facts to all of you. 
So take a look at that. Look at those school messenger alerts. I'm probably going to yes. send another one today to remind you about back to school night again. Uh, sometimes you'll hear me on a phone call. Yeah. If it's very urgent, um, very important, you will hear me saying, hello, this is Mrs. Gebhardt. Tomorrow is going to be uh, whatever that happens to be. That's important. Right. And you know, Mrs. Gephardt, your blog is really informative. I love that you often recognize students. I thank you for that, and I thank both of you, because you're always putting our children first. Speaking of putting our children first, we've got a couple of signs. These are just some examples of the signs that your students will see as they enter our school building. You as parents will not see these signs. I hate to say that we do have uh, no visitors right now entering the schools because of the COVID pandemic that we're dealing with. However, this kind of signage as well as the stuff that uh, Dr. Kosak talked about before, one way in the hallway, similar to what you would see at Acme or ShopRite or any other place that you frequent, all of those protocols are very much uh, commonplace now in the schools. In fact, they're required in order for us to reopen. So we really hope that um, this podcast has been informative. Um, I'm so grateful for the hard work of so many people that have worked diligently to try to get our schools open. We are really, really, really excited to see our students. Not seeing kids for six months is hard for us as educators. We love our students. We love teaching and learning. We know it looks different and it feels different this year, but behind the mask, everybody is smiling. Everybody's excited to bring the students back in. And special thanks, of course, to Mrs. Gephardt and to Dr. Kosak for being here with me this morning at Absolutely. Glen Meadow. Yep. Can't wait to see yep. you on September 8th. Yep, see you on September 8th, everyone.